Hello the folks, it is TIJ Gaming. Welcome back to the Football Manager 2021 beat save with Wolverhampton Wanderers. Today it is time for part 5 of Season 2. We face Huddersfield in the Emirates FA Cup, the third round of the FA Cup at the Molineux, followed by Liverpool visiting us from um, Anfield. And half the way into the season, it's going to be quite a close match. And I wouldn't have believed you if you'd have said this at the start of the year. We are ahead of Liverpool going into that fixture, so an absolutely crazy season so far. Let's have a quick look at what's happened since you guys left me. Now, I did warn that we were going to play quite an extended period. I've played eight games off camera since the last episode where we beat Villa and drew with West Brom. We did qualify from the Europa League group, just to put a bit of spotlight on the Europa League first off. We went and beat Slavia Prague 1-0, an early goal from Daniel Pounds was all we needed. And then against Zoya, as you can see here, a lot of fringe players playing. Luke Cundall got his first start for the club. I mean, it wasn't a start, but it was a sub-appearance. We were going all over to, was it was it Russia, Bulgaria, Ukraine? Somewhere like that. Uh, it was Ukraine, yeah, that we went over to. So I didn't want to take many of the first team players away there. I wanted to make sure they were all uh, fit for that match against Man City, which, as you can see, we were definitely rewarded for. But uh, Mario Balotelli had a, a great match. He scored two goals. If you didn't watch the last episode, he has now moved today, actually, to AZ Alkmaar. And I think it's a good deal for all involved. We signed him on a free transfer last year, and uh, we've made quite the profit on him. He's gone to AZ Alkmaar for £3.4 So good business all round there. We knew he wasn't really going to play this year, but uh, nice to see him having a bit of a say in that match against Zoya. Um, against Leeds United, then the next match in the Premier League, it was a brilliant match. Um, Raul Jimenez got all four goals. Really good match for him. Uh, Leeds did get two late on, which is a bit of a concern, but I suppose that tanks the results slightly. But the great thing to see is that we did a lot with our possession. 44% of possession, and obviously four goals for it, so a brilliant match from us. The next um, was one of only two defeats in this run, and that was against Chelsea. We went and lost against them 2-0. Not too fussed, because unlike last year, Chelsea are really the form team. They're five points clear at the top of the table. going to be a big game, that is, in the next one, Chelsea against Man United. If Chelsea lose that one, it... Uh, puts it wide open again, but they can go eight points clear with 18 matches to go if they go and win that one. Um, we've got a narrow win against West Ham in the league. I was a bit concerned with that, but those sort of games were just okay to walk away with three points. We got a 1-0 victory. We've talked about the Zoya game and a brilliant result against Man City, a great draw. This was really going to be a worrying period, I thought. I thought Chelsea, Tottenham, Man City and Man United, um, that could have been a real problem, but we got a point there, four, three points out of Tottenham. So four points out of 12 in that run is not too bad at all. We've got a brilliant point against Man City. Adama Traore getting an early goal. Yeah, Felix getting a 22nd minute goal. But really, we defended quite a bit during that match. Man City should have won, but we got the draw, so that was good. Uh, we then inflicted some damage on our uh, on Wolves' previous manager, Nuno. Uh, we went and beat them by three goals to one. Funnily enough, it was Tottenham who actually went in at the break ahead. But uh, a goal from Troy Ray on the edge of the 60th minute and uh, a double from Morgan Gibbs-White at the end of the match gave us the 3-1 victory. And then in our latest match, we lost against Man United. It was 2-1, but the damage was done long before that. Uh, a goal in the 35th and 81st minute cemented the result. Raul Jimenez got a late reply in the 93rd minute, but uh, as you've just seen, that leaves the league table looking like this. So we are really... I would say in a run for 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. We'd like to finish 6th, um, but if we can't, then I suppose it's not the biggest problem in the world. I think the top three are starting to run away with it a little bit now. You can see there's a bit of a gap from us to Man City, then to Man United and Chelsea. But Liverpool haven't had the best start. It'd be interesting to see that game against them. Leicester not doing too well again. Nottingham Forest not doing too bad, actually, with 15 points. I thought they'd really struggle and Fulham um, have started to pick up a bit of pace now. But uh, the FA Cup, we've never actually won a, a cup match in this uh, career mode so far. It's another busy month, as you can see, in January, but not so hard-hitting with the teams we're playing. We've also got uh, the Europa League first knockout round coming in a few weeks' time. We've got Valencia in that, so that'll be a toughie, but one I think we can probably get ahead and win at. Um, now, for this match, also, there's a few players that you might not have seen before. And what I've done for this match, I've tried to use a few players from the first team. Moutinho, Shabani, Jimenez, Watmore and Patricio will get a place. But I wanted to reward some of my younger players, the likes of uh, Dion Sanderson, Raphael Neuer, Luke Matheson, uh, Bruno Jordao, who was in the first team anyway, Day, Way to Sun, uh, Dadashoff. All of these players have done really well in the under-23s team. So I wanted to reward, reward those guys with a start today. I know I've said that I would like to win this, but at the end of the day, the club might be a bit peed off. But personally, I think the league and the Europa League are the most important thing here. But... I think against a Huddersfield side, I mean, they've just appointed Ralph Hassenhuttle, which is an interesting choice. Let's have a look where they are. They're 19th in the Championship, so even with those players in this squad, we should be beating them. So 
I think we tell the guys we're favourites. We should be winning this comfortably. But this is the FA Cup and uh, it, it, it's one of those that we've never done too well in personally. But uh, we'll see how we get on. It'd be great to bring some good cup form to Molyneux. We've done brilliantly in the league. We've done well in the Europa League to date. Uh, but obviously we haven't done anything in the in the domestic cups. We had quite a horrible draw, I think, in the Carabao Cup we did against Man City. There's not a lot we could have done about that. But we've got a chance here. We've got Huddersfield. We could well win at least one game. And Raul Jimenez one-on-one -on -one with a keeper. An early chance, a very good assist that would have been from Rafael Neuer, who takes Willy Bolly's place in the centre of defence. He's naturally a right-back, but I wanted to put Sanderson and both Neuer in the squad, and Neuer can play at centre-back. Good ball from Sanderson to, wow, Matinho, and I'll tell you what, Matinho's going to be a bit peed off with that. I know I've said peed off a few times, but again, it's not profanity. But uh, Jay Matinho should have had that, but uh, Maritan Shabani had the last say. Shabani had got, got a quick nick on it, and uh, we go one a lot four minutes in. And that's just what I'd say. I mean, it was Matinho who scored it, really. Shabani got a very uh, slight knock. I think he got the header on it, but I don't think he'd swayed the shot that much. I feel like Matinho should have been maybe uh, given that goal. But it seems like this match should be one we're going to get through OK based on the first exchanges. But there's still a while to go. You never know what's going to happen in the Cup. I was, I was thinking maybe not to bring this match to you because, again, it's one of those that we should win. But I did think, well, we've been away for eight matches. I don't want to be away for much longer. And uh, that Liverpool tie sounds quite interesting. I suppose anything can happen in the FA Cup. But I've hated to have lost again and said, oh, by the way, we've lost in the FA Cup. We're out. So in some ways, I don't really want to do too well in the FA Cup because I want to focus on the league and the Europa League. But we have got more depth in our squad this year. So we, we could certainly deal with a run in the FA Cup. There's nothing to say we can't. But Murphy's in the box here. Good save from Rui Patricio. I was actually going to play Zarkic, who's our number two. But Zarkic has got... Some sort of um, suspension issue. He's not injured. I'm not quite sure how he's suspended for the FA Cup, but fair enough. So on the bench, if uh, Patricio gets injured, we've got our 16-year-old youngster, Luke Matthews. So, yeah, I'd be a bit worried about that if I was him. But we're looking okay at the moment. Not too convincing, to be honest. We are only 1-0 up. I'd like to get 2 or 3 just to cement this. Um, on the edge of the box, we've got a free kick, though, from Yao Moutinho. And it's very nearly 2-0. Good uh, clearance, albeit only temporary for Huddersfield. And yeah, Matinho is doing quite well, I have to say. Again, I've said before that I think I'm going to leave him at the end of the year. I think we're going to release him at the end of the season. He's he, he's too high in terms of his wages. He's 34 years of age. And, you know, for how much he's being paid, I can't see him getting back into the squad on a full-time basis. Especially not now with us having uh, Ward-Prowse and Neves in the team. But I'll tell you what, Murphy nearly, very nearly made it one each. This isn't secure, you know, I am worrying about this. This is the sort of match that we are one nil up. We've had a few of them in the league as well, where we've had a slender lead and they've come back and got a late equaliser. The last thing we need, I mean, that's a poor pass. That is a really poor pass. I think that was Jack Watmore. That was a shocker. I told you this is the sort of thing it could have been. It was Jordao, actually, who gave away possession. Sorry, Jack Watmore, I apologise for that, but that just wasn't good enough. Really wasn't. Playing a bit too deep, really, here, I have to say. Jordan with a terrible pass. Absolutely terrible. And, yeah, I'm a bit worried now. Raul Jimenez has been a bit... Un well, he's just been unsighted, really, in this match. We haven't seen him at all. So I'm going to um, put Shabani up there, see what he can do, because he's a fairly decent striker. Put him as a pressing forward like Jimenez. And it also gives Jimenez a bit of a break as well. So we're going to bring Danny Pacheco on. Um, and we're going to bring him on here as a shadow striker. He's a good backup player. He's another player that would like to leave the club. Because he's got irked due to contractual issues. But he's a good player. He's a good backup player. Particularly considering we brought him in for free. Can we get a goal? Sanderson with a shot. And Dion Sanderson from right back. Scores an excellent debut goal. Brilliant stuff. That's what we like to see from our youngsters. It's great to give the youngsters a chance. It was a real buzz when Luke Kundal came on in the match against uh, Zoya and got a goal. It's great to see the youngsters getting a goal. I mean, Luke Kundal certainly isn't the sort of quality we need for the first team. But he was one of the only players who was fit enough to go and play. And I thought, well, even if we get hammered by Zoya today, we've qualified. So it doesn't really matter. And we actually hammered them 5-1. So great to see Sanderson getting on the score sheet. That should hopefully give him a bit of a boost. And uh, if we get another good draw again, the likes of Huddersfield, I'm not too fussed. I'm happy to give some of these players another chance, providing they continue to perform in the under-23s. Dada shove into the box. Doesn't quite happen, but a good cross from him. Good intent there. Jack, uh, not Jack Watmore. I keep saying Jack Watmore's everyone today. Sorry, Jack. I know you can't be in four places at once. Saar, Schindler, still at the club. Walton to Saar. This is a bit nervous from Huddersfield. Hopefully we can take advantage of hoof out from 
the goalkeeper. That's exactly what we do by putting the pressure on. Danny Pacheco's in the box. He shoots and he makes it 3-1. That's his first goal of the season. He's not really featured too much this year. He's very much fourth or fifth choice. But he's done a good job there by getting the goal. And you would think with that, barring any real drama, that should be us through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. A good assist there from Renat Dadashoff. And uh, a good game for some of our youngsters today. I mean, Dadashoff with the assist. We obviously had Sanderson with the goal. They've played pretty well, our youngsters, which is great to see. Really is. And it gives some of our first team players a, a bit of a chance to rest. So, you know, that's a thumbs up all round. Um, I'm going to bring you Matinho off now for... Let's just see if we can change this. I don't really want to bring Neves or Ward-Prowse on, but we're going to have to, I think. Yeah, we'll bring uh, Ward-Prowse on. Swap him and Jordao about. We're also going to give Niall Ennis a 10-minute run out. Why not? See what way he can do um, up front. He's a decent player, he's Ennis. Not really going to be first team quality. I think his contract runs out at the end of the year. So he might be a player who goes the end of the year. But he's done well in the under 23s. Again, I only like to pick players off their form. I'm not going to put anybody in the squad for the sake of it. They've got to work for it. And it just gives uh, Shabani a bit of a rest. Gives Ennis a run out. And as you can see, not too much of an issue in the end. They did make it one each. But with those two late goals, it's uh, a good breathing space. And uh, a good match for us. Danny Pacheco. Looks like Sanderson's going to get man of the match. Which is excellent. Must have... Defended well, as well as getting that goal, which is brilliant. Matheson to Pacheco. Can we get a late one? Matheson into Niall Ennis. Shoots. That was shocking from Ennis. He must have had all the time in the world to do something there. Couldn't quite do it. There we go. That's the final whistle. And uh, three goals to one to us. Chuffed. Good stuff. Well done. Good win for us. We go through to the fourth round. I'll let you know who we've got in the fourth round in the next match. Let's have a quick look if there are any big shocks in the cup. Burnley lost to Sheffield United. 4-0. I suppose that's a bit of a shock. Anything else? Not really anything I can particularly see. No. Newcastle went out to West Ham. I suppose it's not the biggest shock in the world, is it? But, uh, yeah, we've got to the third round. The club vision, they want us to get to the quarter final. I think that's the sixth round, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to be tough. That is going to be tough. But I guess we're on track to do it at the moment. Let's see what we can do. And I'll be back in a week's time for that big match against the Reds. I always love myself a good draw, so let's have a quick watch of the FA Cup draw. We're not, not going to do automatic draw because that'll take too long. So Liverpool have got Leicester. That's a tough match for both. Preston play Blackburn, Palace, Swansea, Norwich, Middlesbrough. Ready or Hull, that wouldn't be a bad game for us. They've got Stoke. Barrow, I'd take that. They've got Derby. Oxford or Bristol again, I'd take that. They've got Bristol Rovers in the Championship. You watch us get United. No, not, not, not quite. So, we're at home. We've got Watford. That's that's not an easy one, but not the hardest match we could have got either. So we'll take that. The 22nd of January. Let's see where that fits in. It's going to be a tight schedule. This is uh, eight matches in January. Just a bit of transfer talk as well between matches. We've got interest in Matheson, uh, in Goey and Dadashoff. Two of those guys, of course, have played uh, in the previous match on loan. So I'm happy to send them out on loan. Uh, Meritan Shabani wants to leave the club. He's got two offers from Augsburg and Schalke. Schalke offered him £5 million for someone who's a fringe player, given the fact that we signed him a few years ago for £1.4 He's a player I like. He's a fashionable player, someone I like, but if he has to go, then he has to go. Um, and we've got a decision being uh, waited on on a work permit on Mario Goetze. Again, I know that it's not going to be a player that we probably use because I'm looking to leave Wolves at the end of this season, but um, I don't want to leave them in the lurch. So as a replacement for Maritain Shabani, I thought Mario Goetz would be absolutely perfect. So uh, his contract runs out at the end of the year. We're looking to pay him £75,000 a week. Shabani's on 12, so it just, just doesn't compare at all, does it? But uh, if we get somebody like Moutinho out of the club, who's on, I think, 30 or 40, might even be more than that. Let's have a look. £100,000. There you go. Goodness me. So if he leaves the club and Goetz comes in, then there's that bit of... Uh, Work we can do around right wage budgets. But really, if you take Matinho out of the equation, there's only really Maritain Shabani who's obviously leaving the club now. Max Meyer, who's a decent player, and Gibbs White in that attacking midfield position. So we want a bit of depth there. And, uh, you know, what better depth player can you have than Mario Goetz? That would be a whopping signing, given the club hopefully don't bloody block it because he's not a Portuguese. So a few things pre the uh, Liverpool match. We've had a transfer offer for Dion Sanderson. He did score a goal in the last match for us. Now, he's out of contract this summer. And he looks like he could be a decent player for the first team. We've, we've had a tempting offer, though, from Queen's Park Rangers for him. Albeit 1.1 million. Can we increase that to 1.5 without any instalments? Let's see. Okay, so they've come back. 800,000 per stop. Basically, 1.4 million. 
I think I'll take that. I think I will take that for him. Um, good news is, is that Mario Goethe has been given a work permit, so he's going to be a player who will uh, go to us. Can we buy him now? PSV are asking for 12 million. No, no, no. Not doing that. That just seems stupid. So he will sign in the summer. Now, Shabani obviously hasn't left the club yet, but let's have a quick look. Is there anybody on the loan list who could fill in for Shabani? At least a second choice. I mean, we've got. I can't believe that Christian Eriksen's on the loan list. He's a player that surely that won't happen. Um, we've got Callum Hudson Adoy. He could be a great choice. Really, could be a great choice. But uh, I don't think they'll let him. Let us have him on a loan deal. Although it might be tempting to have a look. Anybody here? I don't think there's anybody great. Um, let's have a look. See if we can get Hudson Adoy. Ask agent about availability. I just want to loan him for goodness sake. I bet they won't loan him. They want £110,000 a week. No. For someone who's just going to be a, a backup for us, that's not going to work. How about this guy from Ost from Barcelona? Ricky Puig. We've got full stats on him apparently. So let's have a look at him compared to Morgan Gibbs-White. They look about equal. What 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 sort of uh, wages do they want? Thirty four thousand a week. No, I just want someone who's going to be a backup, and that's not that's not going to happen, is it? But uh, yeah, we've got our game against Liverpool. I'll quickly pick the team off camera. And I'll be back with you guys in just a second. So it is our usual side that's going to take on Liverpool, with one small exception. You can see it centre back. We've got Kilman and uh, Cody. Willie Bolly is on international duty with uh, Ivory Coast for the African Cup of Nations. He'll be back on the 2nd of Feb. So we'll miss him quite a bit. Fingers crossed that Cody and Kilman uh, stay fresh. We've also got Jimenez going out for a, about a week uh, on international duty. Not exactly sure what that's all about. But Haral Jimenez, you can see, is going out for a week. After this, though, I've had a check. It's just going to be Bolly after that. So uh, Jimenez is going to miss the next two games, I think. We've got yeah, we've got Burnley, then Fulham. So that's why Campana's only in the reserves today. We're going to put him out there for the under-23s for a match. Try and get him some match sharpness. And then hopefully in a few days' time, he can jump into the place of Raul Jimenez. But if desperate, if he's not gone by then, uh, Shabani can fill in there. So Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool, they've brought in Martin Odegaard this year. Looks like That looks like a frightening squad, but clearly one that uh, hasn't really worked for them so far. So, yeah, it's not ideal that Willie Bolly's not there. Liverpool have had a good run, it seems. Great. Happy. You know, I'm a, I'm a big Liverpool fan, but nothing would give me more pleasure than beating them today and putting some real daylight between us and Liverpool. In the early match, Chelsea uh, scored four. In fact, it was Timo Werner who got four. So they beat uh, Man United. That's put a big gap between them and anybody in the league. So if we can win today, that would certainly help us out. Ruben Neves on the run puts a good ball to try away. Doesn't quite work though there. It looks like Liverpool could be on the counter. Odegaard, good tackle from Ward Prowse. I feel like we're, this is a match we will probably um, come out the wrong side of given the that Liverpool are on good form, but we're above them in the table, so we've got no right to feel like underdogs. Liverpool the better team on paper and uh, their squad, but as I said, no reason why we can't go for this. We've beaten big teams, we've beaten the likes of Tottenham, we've got a draw against Man City, playing that this attacking way, and that's exactly how we're going to continue to play. Neto into Raul Jimenez, good ball, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and Raul Jimenez scores his 14th goal of the season, and we lead here at Molyneux against the Reds, and Liverpool's season continues to go quite poorly. They're on a good run, it seems. They're fourth in terms of the form list, but they haven't been to Molyneux, have they, this season? A cracking ball from Neto. Jimenez finding the space, crucially not being offside. Liverpool probably trying to play the offside trap there. And a cracking, smashing finish from Raul Jimenez. And as you can see, that extends our... Uh, our, our what's, what's it called? Our grip. That's the one. It extends our grip on fourth place in the league. Now, three points clear of fifth place. Morgan gives White now on the run. What can he do? Hmm... Not really good enough from Gibbs White. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, it's a foul. It's a, pen it's a penalty. Wow. Well, Peter Banks having a look at this. It looked like Fabinho got the ball. That's why I wasn't really having a think about that. Peter Banks is looking at this. Is he going to give the penalty? I don't think it was a penalty. But he's given it. Wow. We could go 2 up against Liverpool here, folks. 27 minutes in. It's going to be Jimenez to take the penalty. This would be a cracker. Shoots and scores. Wow, that is brilliant. I'm, 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 a, I'm lost for words a little bit here because I came into this match expecting to be pubbled 3-4-5-0, but we're just playing brilliantly. We really are, and there's 
there's not really much of a secret to. We're playing our best players. They're playing well, especially Jimenez. Be a shame to lose him for a few matches, but luckily he's only going to be out for those two matches. Hopefully he doesn't get injured on international duty. But we are all over Liverpool at the moment. Again, as I said, we were going to play that attacking football. That is working. We could have another chance here. Ruben Neves into a Dharma trial rate. It's free. It's 3-0. What a finish that was from Troy, right? Alisson beaten far too easily, but a cracking assist there from Ruben Neves. And I have to say, out of the two games, I wasn't expecting this one to be the easiest. Admittedly, it's not all over yet. Liverpool are the kind of side who could score four or five in the next hour quite easily. But Alisson beaten far too easily there. We're 3-0 up. This is brilliant, really is. Liverpool are losing. We've got Everton only drawing behind us. Tottenham are losing to West Ham. Uh, City are playing later on, so if they slip up, we could get even close to them. This season has just been amazing. Nobody else is really performing, and we're getting the results. That's a crucial thing. Lovely ball from the side. Ward Prowse to Branagh. Surely it's not going to be four. It is, but I think that one is going to be offside, unfortunately, to, to deny Raul Jimenez his uh, hat-trick. But that would have been a belter if it was 4-0. Uh, I think that he's going to side with VAR again. He is. Uh, it was offside. It looked offside. But still, 3-0 up. We are still playing attacking football. Liverpool can't get a sniff, even though they've had more possession. They've done nothing with it so far, but uh, that nearly was one back. Virgil van Dijk nearly with uh, one back for Liverpool there. But let's see what we can do here. Rui Patricio, it seems we're utilising these balls to the centre-backs, which I don't remember selecting in our tactic. It might just be something Patricio's doing naturally. Good ball from Neto into Jimenez, and it now is 4-0. Wow. Wow, that is unbelievable. Jimenez gets a hat-trick. Three of them from open play. We got the penalty, but Neto... I mean, is that Joe Gomez? I think it is Joe Gomez. Beats him far too easily there. Beats Virgil van Dijk. Lovely ball into Jimenez in plenty of space. All he has to do is volley it. 4-0 Wolves. Wow. I mean, I sound a bit like Keith Ewan on the MotoGP here, but wow. <sighs> We're not going to go in the league. That that's stupid talk. But I mean, we we can't tell them to get to stop being complacent because that will just shatter them. And we're not going to concede four this half, surely, are we? I know that's happened once with the famous Newcastle and Arsenal game, but surely it's not going to happen. Liverpool haven't started the half brilliantly. West Ham now two 0 up against Tottenham. Everton have got their star man injured in Dominic Calvert Lewin, so that might help Leicester out to go and beat them. This could just be the perfect day. But let's see. I don't think we're going to get a clean sheet. Liverpool are going to get back into this game somehow. Joe Gomez has got a chance to get into the box here. He does, but Ward-Prowse clears it fairly easily. But Martin Odegaard has got something to say. Andy Robertson to Thiago. Into Bobby Firmino. Firmino gets one back. Again, they've got to get free in the space of half an hour. I can't see it. Um, and the way we are playing, I'd guess we'd probably get another one as well. But the way that I, I'm really concerned about these short clearances. Why is this happening? In transition, yeah, we're not telling him to distribute to centre-backs. But if it's working for him, I guess it is. We're not going to change that. Neves with a ball hoofed up. It's not really going to happen this time. But Robertson, back to Alisson. Fabinho, I mean, if, if it's 4-2 at this stage, two goals in the space of three minutes, I start to get a bit worried. But a good save there from Rui Patricio. Obviously, Diego Jota playing for Liverpool. It'll give me uh, such an amount of pleasure to put one over on Diego Yotta. Of course, they beat us 6-0 at the start of last year. Allison on a 5.9 rating, so he's had an absolutely dreadful day. We're going to try and rotate a bit here, then bring, we'll bring Pacheco on for Neto. Gibbs White can come off from Shabani, um, and we'll make it 3-3 free free here. We'll bring uh, Jordao on for James Ward-Prowse. I know Ward-Prowse is a little bit knackered after the last match, so good to give him a bit of a break. We've got 15 minutes to go here. I can't see Liverpool getting back into this now. I really can't. Villa are beating Leeds United as well. So all four sides below us, if it's a draw between Everton and Leicester, all five sides below us will drop points. Of course, Man United have dropped points as well. Lose to Chelsea 4-1. I mean, could we get second in the league? It's crazy to say. But if we can beat sides like Liverpool 4-1, or maybe even more, we've got the potential. I felt like that was going to be an absolute screamer to go 5-1 up. But not quite. West Ham now 3-0 up against Tottenham. What a result that is for them. Absolutely fantastic for them. And uh, we're going to get three points clear in fourth. That is really special at this point. Given that we've got through the toughest part of our season, we've probably got those three or four matches uh, at the end of the season that are going to be really tough. But generally speaking, the first half of that uh, tough spell, we've got through brilliantly. And to be three points clear in fourth after that spell, 
is amazing. We have beaten Liverpool in style. We've beaten them by four goals to one. I am really happy I came back for that match. A fantastic hat-trick from Raul Jimenez. I don't care that we didn't score in the second half. Um, it was a brilliant result for us. The fans are sure to be absolutely chuffed, apart from the Liverpool fans, obviously. Let's have a look at the other results. Yep, Leverton and Leicester both drop points. Leeds drop points. Arsenal haven't played yet, nor have Palace. Uh, Villa didn't. So, basically, apart from um, Chelsea, the, the, the first side below us to have gained any points today are Villa and uh, Burnley. So, a brilliant day for us. We go three points clear in fourth. We're now eight points clear of um, continental qualification. We could get fourth here. We really could. Mm, Neves has been tracked by Tottenham. They've been interested in him for a long time. And they haven't put a bid in yet. I feel like this could be the time. And don't tell anyone. But if they were to put a good bid in, sort of, I'm looking for, I mean, they're saying 58 million. I'd be looking more 70, 80. If they come in with that sort of bid, I'm genuinely quite happy to get rid of Neves. And I know that sounds shocking because he's had a good season. But if you look... It's not been that great, actually. 17 appearances, one goal, four assists, one player of the match. Average rating of 6.7. It's nothing that's dazzling. I don't think we're going to miss him too much. We'd certainly quite like the money. And uh, Nevers is interested in the move. So I think if an offer comes in, we're going to struggle to keep him. But interesting. Let's see what happens. But we're probably going to play the rest of January off camera. Um, and I'm probably going to come back for um, probably the... I'll come back for the Villa game at home, because we all like a good derby, don't we? We'll come back for the Villa game. We'll skip past, depends what happens with fixture congestion, I suppose. But prov provisionally, we'll come back for the Villa game, play the Newcastle one off camera, and then play against Valencia in the first leg of the Europa League uh, first knockout round. But if you've enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like down below. An awesome result uh, in both matches. Again, I didn't expect Liverpool to be the easier match, but what a match it was. Thank you for watching. I've been TIJ Gaming. Make sure to subscribe for daily Football Manager 2021 content. Remember to also leave a like. Any sort of engagement really helps this video to get seen by more people, which is always appreciated. Also, comment your thoughts. Have a good rest of your Football Managing Day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye for now.